I want to read to you from a book called Suspended in Mystery. Now, the reason I want to read this to you is because I think it's important that we expand ongoingly our understanding of Christ in every tabernacle throughout the church. It would be good for you to know that this writing has received a formal church imprimatur from our local bishop here, and that's good to know because it means that everything in this writing is consistent with our Catholic faith and teachings. Now, each time we receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, we receive the wisdom he acquired through each and every day of his life on earth. How many situations of human suffering, human joy, human triumph, and also tragedy did Jesus witness? his eyes, his eternal and divine self, together in one human lifetime, saw in each day and each situation the fullness of the truth about the experience of humanity. This wisdom is encapsulated in the Eucharist. We live a life close to the Eucharist in order to benefit from the life of Christ and the full emotional health of his human experience. Why do we consider emotional health in the Eucharist? Because Christ suffered all that we suffer, albeit in different circumstances and at a different time and as a separate person. These differences notwithstanding, there is a sameness in the emotional challenges. We focus on emotional health because it is our job to get our emotional selves under control so as to positively impact the emotional health of others. God is love. Understanding love and what it prompts and restricts will bring us into the closest availability to God for his plan and purpose, both for us and for the world. When scientists studied a Eucharistic miracle in Poland recently, they identified the Eucharist as heart tissue from someone experiencing anguish. We receive Christ in the Eucharist. All of his human experiences of love have become a permanent part of his eternal self. Well, with all of that knowledge and all of that wisdom that comes from overcoming self in favor of the Father's plan. The presence of Christ in us when we receive him acts as a magnetic force for our own eternal self. He draws us closer to him and even into total harmony with him if we allow it. We must consider that the more reflective we are when we receive the Eucharist, in other words, the more we think, the better. We want to be worthy, yes, but we cannot be really. So instead, we offer humility and hope. We know we are humanly flawed and we have every right to hope that Christ over time will bring us further and further into his way of thinking, seeing, and doing. If we are not prepared to receive Christ, if our feelings are unruly and conflicted, if we are even in a swirl of human distress, then we must receive the Eucharist for its calming and healing benefits. Unless we are in a state of mortal sin, which is a decision to remain against God. It's deliberate. I think it's rare. Now back to the writing. I'm at a loss to describe what seems humanly impossible to describe. Perhaps science can help. If our eternal self is a point of energy, a DNA strand that makes us eternally unique, then that is what comes into us through the Eucharist and that is what we intuitively recognize as pure. The hope of transformation is what simultaneously humbles us and gives us hope. So let us understand that the frequency of vibration of Christ is unique. Over time, if we receive the Eucharist frequently, or at least regularly, the hope is that we come more and more to exist on that same frequency as Christ or at the very least, come to understand more where we are different from Jesus and thus where we need to change. 
What is it in us that does not resonate with the perfection of Jesus Christ? He himself reveals that to us if we receive him regularly. We recall that he is the same Christ that existed in his physical time on earth. Jesus will never change. We have access to something similar to the first apostles, only they would probably say that we are even more blessed in the Eucharist than they were in his human presence. Can we quibble really over who is more blessed? Of course not, because we are all only ever going to be approaching a fuller understanding of Christ and his presence in the Eucharist. And even if we nail this subatomic personal presence and signature of Christ, we will have to wrestle with the beauty of his ongoing decision to make himself available to us and the extraordinary humility of his submission to bread and wine suspended in mystery for our sustenance and learning. On our journey, the Eucharist transforms us over time. Our daily experiences make sense and become filed in the right categories, as it were, when we experience them against the backdrop of the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. All is learning, all is stretching. There is an answer to every single moment. There is a way, a perfect way for each situation. And the way to access that perfect way daily is to receive Christ in the Eucharist and to adore him in the Eucharist. We must form people properly because they must know that they can be attracted to purity and still be vulnerable and even drawn at times to impurity. Those conflicting hungers are natural. And it's only through time and experience, through a journey, that we can come to value that vibration of Christ above all other conflicting states. We must teach the Eucharist with urgency.